so you'll hear it on here, okay? I thank you for his mercy. Yes! Like what Sister Jennifer's teaching in our adult class. A lot of times people take for granted. I think about this country and it one of the things that ill me the most is people that take for granted our freedom. The men that sheds blood and and keeps this country secure for us. And I, and I tell you right now, that, uh, some people take for granted of what the Lord has done for you and I. I just can't imagine being beat like that. I can't imagine being spit upon. I can't imagine being, the Bible says that they blindfolded the Lord in Cephas' house and they literally opened palm slapped him, the Bible says, and they would ask, if you if you be this prophet, if you be the Messiah, tell us which one just slapped you. I don't know I could have took that. Because of my flesh. But I hope I can preach you something today that the reason why that he's able to tote that bearing for you and I, that burden. But uh, I'm going to be in the book of Colossians today. He is so merciful to us. Yeah. It just seems like everybody's just all over this message today. I, some people think that they're going to be fishing in heaven. Some people... Ain't they gonna be socializing with their grandma and grandpa? But I don't believe that. Right, no. I believe the power and the anointing of God's gonna be so strong in that place, Sister Karen, in that city. That, I believe that. that we're gonna be in worship 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Amen. The Bible says that our body's gonna be changed in a moment of a twinkling of an eye. We're not gonna give out. We're not gonna be wore out will endure. The Bible said it's going to be a city where there is no night. My God, in the name of Jesus. But if you got your Bibles, I'm going to start in verse 25 of Colossians chapter 1. merciful to reveal himself. Amen. Sometimes we look at ourselves and we say, well, my God, how, how much? I don't think you can ever get enough. But the word goes like this, wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Talking about preacher man. Even the mystery which hath been hidden from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Amen. Look at the word manifest there. Yes. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glories of this mystery among the Gentiles. The church, we're Gentiles. Yes. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. That's the mystery. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man, not some men, but every man, perfect in Christ Jesus. Yes. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Lord. Lord God, I ask you right now, Jesus, you, Lord, for who you are and what you are, Lord. I ask you right now, Jesus, just to move in this place. Yes, Lord, Lord, in a mighty way today, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the word. I thank you for all that you've given us, Lord, today. Lord, I thank you for the Sunday school teachers. I thank you for the worship service. Lord, I thank you for everyone that's here, Lord God, for your word. And as you penned it in Isaiah, you said that your word would go forth. 
And where you send that word, Lord, it would not be void, but where you send it, Lord Jesus, my God, it would prosper. It would multiply, Lord Jesus. And I ask that this day, Lord God, that your word multiply in this place. Multiply, Lord God. I ask it in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Ain't God good today? Yes. Hallelujah. The word was brought to you and I, amen, for it to be revealing to us that it would open our eyes that we would need the Lord, amen. To get understanding and to need Jesus as our personal Savior. We can't make it church without Him. Amen. I, I want to just kind of build just a small foundation that you would understand sometimes we look and Bible says this in Romans. How can they hear except they have a preacher? How can a preacher preach except he be sent? Talking about if the Lord calls him to go preach. I know that many rise up and call themselves preachers, but I, I just don't believe it because this thing, uh, the Bible talks about in Ezekiel, amen, that the, that the priest would become as prey of men, amen. And we're not here today for me to be praying over you as pray, as looking at you, as a, me as being the predator, amen. Right. But my job is to lead and to guide and to be the watchman, amen, on the wall, amen. amen. And to see God's face for what message, amen, that needs to be preached at what hour it needs to be preached. Amen. I think about it a lot of times. We, in our little old nursery that we've got, amen, we've got some citrus trees there and some people's walk by and ooed off because they begin to got some lemons. Now, Sister Karen, we got a few great fruits are coming on, but right now they all green. Amen. And they pretty green, but they still green. Amen. And they are not right to eat at all. Amen. So, amen, if you were to pop one of them off right now, and even that lime tree we got, it's got a few limes on it I seen yesterday. But if you were to pop them off and begin to bust that thing open and squeeze it and Try to make you some limeade or lemonade. You would not get limeade or lemonade right now. All you would get was some pucker lips. That's all you get out of it. Yes. Because that fruit at this time is not right to be picked. Can I get an amen? amen? Hallelujah. So when we look at this word, Sister Karen, we need to walk and we need to understand and listen to the voice of the Lord because there is a time that thus saith the Lord, Brother Al comes across for you and I to grab a hold of it. Amen. That's I want y'all to see that today, amen, yes. because of, of what the Word says for you and I. And I want to just touch on a few things. Uh, I know this weather ain't going to let us get to baptize today unless it uh, fares off, but it's all right. And God's still God, and God knows everything, church. Yes. Does He not? But I, I want to share something with you about wisdom, and I want to share something to you about manifestation. Amen. And understanding why we're here and why, what we are for Him and His purpose behind everything that He does. Sometimes we we look and we, even Brother I was mentioning about the garden when Brother I first started coming in because it don't really make sense that, that, that the Lord would have made Adam and Eve knowing, knowing that they would have sinned. Right. Knowing that Eve was going to be beguiled. Knowing that right. Adam was going to fall in right behind it. Come on. But the thing of it is, and you and I know this, amen, the Lord has got to set this up, Angie, to where you've got to be true blue to Him. Right. It can't be, amen, I'm going to love you because of the benefits. Right. The Bible talks about Him making us a free moral agent, amen. Yes. We've got the right to love Him. Brother Al, we've got the right to hate Him. Right. That's the way He set it up in the New Testament. Sometimes we look, we scratch our head, why all the graphics? Why would we take and be beat like that? Why would he be wounded for our transgressions? Why in the world did he just didn't make us, Sister Karen, a perfect human race that we would be sinless? Right. right. But then it wouldn't be true love. Come on. Sister Shelley, it wouldn't be true love, amen, if he did not set things in your path, amen. Not right. to tempt you, amen, but to test you. Come on. To find out because that's what he done with Abraham. When he took Abraham and said, all right, take Isaac up, amen, and I, I want you to sacrifice him. Come on. 
And something that I find out when you read that, and we mentioned it here, I don't know how many times we've been here 11 years. Amen. But the Bible says when Abraham prepared that sacrifice, tied his son up, pulled the dagger out, and was fixing to sacrifice Isaiah. Amen. The Lord spoke to him and said, that Here, don't do it. I provided me a sacrifice. And the Lord spoke to Abraham and said this, Now I know that you love me. That's right. Right. Now I know, Sister Kelly, that you love me. Right. But all these things have to be put in our path, amen, that we pick and choose. Are we going to serve the Lord, amen, or are we going to serve the world? There ain't really no other way. Jesus said you're either with me or against me. Right. You can't. We preached about what it says in Revelation, amen. Whether you be hot or cold, but if you be lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Amen. Right. We can't sit here and... and, and done this illustration many times, just kind of straddle this altar. One day I'm going to be with Jesus. One day I'm going to be out here in the world. One day I'm going to try to serve the Lord. One day I'm going to be in the world. Amen. we got to make our mind up. Amen. Right. And you say, well, Brother Kenny, it's hard to live out in the world. Well, let me tell you this. Amen. I understand that. I'm fleshy and bones. If you want to get a pocket knife out and cut me, I believe just like y'all will. Amen. Right. Amen. If you don't think that my temper and my blood pressure don't rise up, well, show up at work tomorrow because I'm sure there's something go wrong. It just uh, it shouldn't have went wrong. Amen. Because that's the human side of things that Satan is going to take Sister Carrie to make things right. just as bad as he can. Right. Right. But I was thinking as I was in my truck earlier today out here and I went to check the mail and I, and I understand how hard it is in the world. But what the Lord, I was just dealing with the Lord there, speaking with Him and talking to Him. But the thing that came to my mind, Brother Allen, He dropped in my spirit, but He said, I overcome it. He said, I never said that I would take you and allow you to be voided from you. Amen. Right, right. That I would snatch you up and say, you know, you ain't, no, no, there ain't nobody going, you ain't got to suffer nothing. You right, ain't going right, to have to go to work. Right. Amen. You ain't going to have to do nothing because I'm going to baby you and you're going to be right here. Right. Amen. And how many people we know that's been like that in their life and they ain't worth knocking in the head? Come on, somebody. Come on, amen. And they've been giving everything to them. Amen. They take a bed and love you and run it up a pine tree. Amen. And their mom and daddy go get them another. Amen. They ain't dis they disrespectful. They ain't got no respect and, and don't know how to do nothing. Amen. They couldn't stand on their own two feet if their life depended on it. Come on. Am I right or wrong? That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on, somebody. Right. But the Lord said what he would do, he would be there when you go through them trials. Right. That's what he said. Amen. And he said, I'll make sure, Brother Al, amen, when you go through the fire, amen, that I'll help you get through to the other side. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I'll make sure of that. Yeah. Sister Angie, when you go through and get in the wilderness and you think um, you have, you've run out of water, you've run out of means, and and you've swallowed your last spit, amen. And you say, well, I got no more spit, amen, to swallow. I'm going to lay out here and die. God will be on the scene, you see, because he's an on-time God. Amen. And there's just times, amen, in our lives. And the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please him. Sister Kelly, it's impossible, amen. So are we going to face the adversary every day? You better believe it. Right. That's right. His object and his goal, church, is to destroy you and I. Yes, it is. Yes. This is a ball game. Come on. God's got a team. Satan's got a team. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. And you make your mind up which side you're going to score a ball, uh, a touchdown on. Make your mind up. I'm going to be on the winning side. Amen. I done read the last yeah. chapter of the book. Yeah. And I already got a cheat sheet and I already know who's going to win. So I know where I want to be recruited yes, to. Right. I hear what I'm saying. But I, I, I want to share something with you. I said I'd like to, to share something with you today. If you want to go to the book of Ephesians with me. It's important that we we do things and and understand them because a lot of times we say, well, my God, that's crazy that we got to. But it ain't. I've been listening to Sister Jennifer teach, and it's just, it's good stuff what yes. she's been teaching Amen. about that blood. If we just get revelation of it. Yes. Brother Al, if we could really get down and get a hold of that and really, 
I don't know. It'd be like an old dog when he gets around a dead armadillo. Just get in and water in it. You know what I'm saying? Just water in it and be done with it. And get that on you so that you smell like that. Smell like that blood. Let that get it all over you. Amen. You know, that's something how that dog would do that. Well, you know, if we would just get revelation of this and get in this word and water in it, amen, to get up with that word all over us, we'd be all right. That's right, amen. Because it'd be on us, in us, and every time Satan come by, we'd smell like that and he'd get away from us. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? How many times you got around on Well, when Timmy, we dog hunted. Them dogs would stink. My God, they stink. You can smell them coming through the woods. They stunk so bad. After they get watering with them old dead armadillos. You know what I'm talking about? Stink so bad. Well, we ought to be the same way against Satan. He ought to smell us coming, church. I'm just telling you. He ought to, just, they ought to smell us. But I, I want to talk to you today for just a few minutes because I know that you need to see the sincerity of, of, of the relationship of the Lord. And what he done for you? Did he have to do it? No. Could he kept continue watering with the Jews? By all means. Hey Mary, I believe this with all my heart because of what the Word says. And what I see. Jesus said this in the Gospels. He said, I went into my own and my own received me not. It's prophesied in the book of Isaiah. It's prophesied in Jeremiah. And it's prophesied in Ezekiel that he would turn to another nation. Right. Because he's looking for a people that's going to serve him. Right. Amen. Are y'all with me so far? Yes, sir. So I am so thankful. Some people think, and I'm sorry they think this way. I'm not a theologian. But I know what I read in that word. And when I look out here and I line it up. Bible tells me I don't feel that some people think they so worried of what's going on in Israel today. They they timeline of that for the Lord coming back. And the word says that no man knoweth, nor the angels in heaven know when the Lord's coming back. That's right. Everybody with me so far? Yes. And I see them them them. I don't know what you want to call them. I, I um. Sign seekers. They sign seekers or whatever, but them men that goes over there and they pray to that wailing wall because they are praying for deliverance. Brother Al, they praying for Jesus to come back now, first time. They still looking for the Messiah to show up. Amen. And I'm telling you today, church, He has done come. And He has set aside, amen, that Jewish nation in the flesh. Amen. We are spiritual Jews because we're baptized. Amen. With his, uh, what is told of us by the water, amen, that blood is applied and we received his spirit, amen, so we were spiritual Jews today, amen, and he's coming back, the word says for a bride, amen, This made herself ready, but let me read this to you, and I may preach, teach, or whatever it may be to you that I want you to hold on to it, and you may be sitting back and say, well, Brother King, I already know this, well, there's some in here that don't know this that need to know this, amen. amen. Hallelujah. But the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, talking about Paul being an apostle, but I want to pick it up. In the verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God of, of, our Father, of, of our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Everybody see that? Amen. Remember what I read to you start with about manifestation. Amen. This thing needs to be revealed. It needs to be in a place of Amen. That you would understand that you ain't going to make it without Jesus. Brother Al, I don't care how many people try to set, sidestep, baptism. I don't believe they're going because of what the Word says. But it says, according as He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Everybody see that? We've got to be in a place without blame. And we've got to be holy before Him. Amen. Look at verse 5 is what I kind of going to base this thing on. Having predestination, predestinating us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself according to the good pleasure of His will. Y'all grab that. He, Sister Crystal, He thought this thing out from day one. Yes. He thought out what it was going to take, amen, for us to feel Him. 
Y'all with me? He, he thought this thing out. He knew. Y'all believe this or not? Amen. The Bible said that Lucifer was one of the angels. Mm -hmm. Was a top musician. Amen. Tried to overthrow. And part of the angels went down when he went down. Right. But God already knew Lucifer was going to show out before Lucifer showed out. Right. Everybody with me so far? Amen. So he already knew. He's an all-knowing God, Sister Karen. He already knows everything. Right. How long are we going to be here? He knows. We don't, but he knows. Right. But the thing that Jesus said, and I try to push this issue to us, Jesus said to his disciples, he said, what will I find when I come back? Right. What will I find you doing? Brother, what will you be doing, amen, when he comes back? Is it tomorrow? Is it 10 years from now? Is it 50? Timmy, the Bible says no man knows. Amen. But the thing he told us is to occupy till he comes. And we're supposed to be living for him. Because this is what the more I preached it to you the other two or three Sundays ago about the strong man. See, if we know the very day that the Lord was coming back, sister, you listen to me. If we knew what day, amen, we could all get out here and live like the devil. Angel, we could do whatever we wanted to. Let's be honest. And if we knew he was coming back September the 30th, right. well, my God, we could pile in here September the 28th. We could all run down there and get baptized, and we could sit in him fast for two days and squall our eyes out until he shows up right. September the 30th and walk on in. Don't work like that. Nope. If we knew. Right. But we don't know because the Bible says he's coming as what? A thief, a thief in, the in the night. Because see, he wants you to be loyal to him. That's right. right. He wants you to be loyal. Amen. He wants you to know that when I leave here, see, I have that problem where I work. Get everybody started. You understand what I want? Yeah, 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 yeah. And and time you drive and check another job and get back to the shop, they beat you back. There ain't no way you can get back for them. Oh yeah, we got all that done. Yeah. We done 15 <laughs> hours worth of work, three hours. No way you can't. Because of that trust thing. You understand what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about, Tim. You, when you work fellas, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, your mind won't allow you to say you know good and well. Because that's what the Lord's wanting, is trust between you and Him. Amen. Amen. Because this thing has been predestinated. Right. The only way you're going to make it. I like what Sister Crystal said the other day because we, we spray chemicals and she tickled me the other day. And I said, well, <clears throat> I need to be spraying them chemicals, not you, because i got to get your license. And I was telling what Sheila said, we've got to keep these chemicals up, and we've got to keep them in place. And I said, it's all right right now, we're going to get to that. She said, oh, no. She said, you done told me now. She said, Holy Ghost ain't going to allow me right. to let them chemicals sit on the floor when you done told me what's right and wrong is to put them in the cabinet. Right. That's the uniqueness <laughs> of the Holy Ghost. That's why you need it. Right. <clears throat> I'll be an ugly people that don't believe in it. Say, ah, oh, Lord got mercy. Uh -uh. Lord got mercy. If you don't believe in the Holy Ghost, say, hey, Lord I ain't going to allow that happen to me. That good old boy syndrome will work. That's right. When that boy comes and brings you that citation of five grand, then right. you open your eyes up. Well, you're going to say, where's this God at? Well, if you'd have had the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost would have freaked you to do what's right. 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 You know, see what I'm listen. saying? I'm just yeah. trying to get you somewhere. You know, you should have listened. No, it was sin. This predestination thing is what I'm trying to preach to you today. That's why the importance, amen, of what the Word says for you and I to grab a hold of. That's what I, I, want, I want to try to take and, and, and put inside of you today for you to understand about predestination. I think about my children, amen, and I, I, I think about when they were born. Uh, Brother Al, I, I, I looked at them and even when Brittany was, was born, I, I knew I was going to have to change the air of my ways. Right. But not only that, I mean, she was not being ugly. She was a pretty baby, and everybody ooh and odd, but I knew that I had a set future for her, right. or she wasn't going to make it. Even when Jessica come along, everybody ooh and odd, that red hair, and they was ooh and an odd. But I was set in predestination for her future, right. her college, vehicles. you got to get back and forth with her. Amen. She's got to get there. Amen. So I, I've already said that as she was growing up. 
Everybody wondering about what formula she needs to drink, how many diapers she needed. Well, I was out towing, amen, because she's going to grow up, become a preteen. She's going to come 16, going to need a car. She's going to get 18, got out of college. And I was working, I've been working on all of that, amen, because the life cycle says she's going to grow. Right, right. Predestination. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Right. And that's the, way, the same way the Lord works, Sister Kelly. Right. He knows you're going to need him or right. you ain't going to make it. Right. Right. That's right. That right. blood has got to be applied the whole Amen. way. Right. Because right. he already right. looked. If you're going to get Brother Al to the account of age, uh, age accountability, and that blood is going to have to be applied because there ain't going to come a time, a time, Sister Angie, that you're going to say, hmm, I know this is right and I know this is wrong. Amen. That's right. Amen. There's going to be a coming of age accountability. Yes. yes. I mean, we take these little old young and they'll say, I know a little old young and knows that because they get you, you know, and, and trying your patience and all, but really they they don't know. They don't. Got to learn. They don't know. Sister Kelly, they don't know. That's right. Because Bob says train them up in the way they should go. That's right. right. That's, That's what right. word says. Train them. That they will know what's right and wrong. There comes a time. Ain't married to that kid or make his own decisions. Yep. At that age of accountability. But see, the Lord already knew that. See, but now say, well, we now we pushed it, Sister Kelly, a lot earlier than the Israelites. Yeah. In, in Hebrew times, it's 40 years old. Man couldn't leave home till he was 40. Right. What if Charles was still home? He couldn't leave till 40 because when you read a home. When you go and read in that Jewish law and all, they said a man didn't have walking around since until he was 40 years old. I'm being honest with you. Yes, I agree. Sister Shelly, they said he didn't have walking around since. He couldn't leave his daddy until he was 40 years old. He had to ask his daddy for a bride. Go back and read it. If you got time to read about that Jewish tradition. I mean, he's, they all lived together. But 40 years old was the time. They claim, they claim a, a life cycle is 40 years. A man can start living uh, 10 and 40 years. He can begin to have a boat. He can begin to have a truck in 40 years. And we call man 16 is the number now. Right. Just get me 16 where I get some driver's license and I'm out of here. You know, we're 24 years off of what they've done, but there's been a predestination thing here, church, that I want you to see today in understanding the blood of Christ and understanding why we need it. I want to take you back to Colossians. I know I'm bouncing back and forth, but I, I, I just need to show you this. Okay. If you're in Colossians chapter 2, verses, let's do 11 through 14. I know I may be more than some of you, but it's still good word. Yeah. It's still good word because I thank him that he looked at me a long time ago. And he said, I know one day that boy's going to get his head on right, so i got to have plenty of mercy. That's right. As a matter of fact, i got to have Brother Bo two or three dump truck loads of mercy for this. Because if he don't, he ain't going to make it. Thank you ever felt like that, Brother? After you said, I know what you I know. Yes, amen. Because mercy covers it. Yes. But this is what I want to show you in Colossians chapter 2. What's so awesome about him in verses 11 through 14. Then I want to take you toward it, <clears throat> back to the... The other way for a minute or two, but I, I need you to see this. I want you to understand it. It says, In whom also you are circumcised with the circumcisions made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. You don't understand what that's saying there. Once you, my God. Once you're baptized, you're, right. them sins is, is being cut off. Right. In Jewish law, they, the men had to be circumcised to become a Jew, right. to become an Israelite. Yeah. Sister Karen, there was no other way that a man could be brought into the company of other Jew men unless he would be circumcised. Right. That was the covenant between Abraham and God. Right, amen. I'm so glad it ain't like that name. Buried with him in baptism, just said that, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. Brother I was talking about that in our adult class. Brother I was talking all over this message. Brother I was talking about God the Father, 
God the Son and God the Holy had operations. Sister Jennifer talked about the strawberry jello. Y'all was getting in this the way the Lord works. Amen. You got to believe that the Lord can do all things. Yes. Amen. He is all things. And He's all yes. present. Amen. You first got to believe. Amen. Because the Bible says it again. Without faith, it's impossible. But it says, and you being dead, your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you of all your trespasses. Right. That's what happens when you come out of that water, amen. amen. He's forgiven, amen. And I'm going to take you somewhere to prove everything that I'm saying. You say, well, maybe this is Greek, but when I get through, it will not be Greek to you. So hold to me. It says, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, yeah. and it took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. To his, to the cross. cross. To his cross. Amen. Y'all with me so far? Yes. No matter what they said about you, Sister Carrie, I don't mind telling you, no matter me being arrested for fighting and showing out, when I went under, come up, right. all them ordinances was getting, they ain't there no That's more. Right. Amen. You understand that, sister? All of that. Right. All of that ain't there no more. Because why? <laughs> why, sister Angie? Angie, why? Because I went down and I came up. I didn't take that circumcision of the flesh. I took it in the spirit that he would wash come away, on. make clean. No matter what I done back then, it don't matter. It does not matter. Amen. Because it is nailed, Sister Kelly, to this cross when he died for my sin. Amen. Yes. It's nailed right yes. here. And if you really right. could look over the years since Peter's time that he preached Acts 2 38, you probably really couldn't see that cross of for all the papers that come up here, with all the things that each one of us done, right. amen, that was is nailed to this cross. All amen. you would see is a wall right. full of paper, right. amen. Right. That all the right. petitions, all the accusations, everything, Brother Al, <laughs> amen, because we leave it there and we understand that's where it's at. Amen. Yeah. Ain't that awesome? Amen. Oh, amen. Yes. Ain't that awesome that we don't oh, have to Lord. keep walking around today yes. thinking, my God, I got still something hanging on me. Yes. Right. Oh. My God, in the Amen. name of Jesus. I want to run through a couple of things real quick so you believe what I'm telling you is the truth. God is awesome. He's always been awesome. Right. He's been a mystery to those. And that's what Peter, uh, Paul said that I come. Amen. To open this mystery up. Amen. To reveal it. That's what he said in Romans. Uh, and I just read it to you in Colossians. Amen. He, he opened this up. Sister Karen, did you get a hold of it? I preach you this to where revelation comes, amen, where you get some of it, amen, and understand if you just come to the place. A lot of people, I, we see it all the time. Uh, and we know this, and Timmy, I'll pick on you, because I just I pick on you and you take it right. Uncle John, to sit there, beat things in your head, you know, Daddy would do me the same way. We'd say, well, you ain't never going to learn nothing. And one day the light comes on. Years, light comes on. Finally, we learn. And a lot of times, let's be honest, we sit back. And if you be honest, everybody be honest for a moment. I take my Uncle Dave because I just wish I'd wrote some of that stuff down on that pecan tree. And I can't remember everything he told me. But we, you can get windshield time or you can be fishing or you can sit on the back porch. But you'll begin to reminisce of what your grandma said to you or taught you or, or give you that word. Granny, um, uh, Maddie Ma up there, Granny, Great Great Granny, all them talking. And you can just sometimes reminisce in your head of them of, of them elders begin to tell you them things. Right. Because that, that is education that's brought down from experience, from experience, from experience, from experience. Right. And you, money came by to that, Angie. Because somebody experienced all them things. Yeah, in this, living for the Lord, Sister Kelly. Yes. That's why this is written for you and I. And I've said it a thousand times that if everybody would be honest that reads this word, you cannot find a problem in your life that's not in this word. Hang on. And not only find that problem, Brother Al, but find the answer. That's right. That backs that problem up. Amen. Finds the antidote for it. Right. And I'm not just being honest saying, thank you, Jesus. That's the end of it. 
know the Lord will really give you. If right. you want to learn to be a good steward, if you want to, whatever you want to know, it's in here. Amen. 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 That's right. Everything is in here that you need to know. Yes. Every situation in your life has been in this Word. Right. It's designed that way that you could go, Sister Karen, to run through here and find it and say, well, what happened? Amen. How do I fix it? Right. Well, there's a fixing in here. Amen. And that's the way you go about it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes. But when you look at this word, the Bible says in Acts 22, 16, I'm going to give you all of this, and I ain't going to hold you, but I, I need you to see this. Some people have told me several things about baptizing. When you look at Acts 22, 16, the question is asked this, and now why terrorist thou? Why do you tear? Why are you why are you being there? Why not get in the water? Right. Arise and be baptized. And wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Right. Everybody see that? Yes, sir. So when people tell you I ain't got to, some people's told me they spiritually, and I don't know how you do that, they spiritualize baptism. I don't understand that. Yeah, I've been told some things. So I don't know how you spiritualize that and not get in the water. I don't know how you might be weak when the Word says that. But I want to read you something, Acts. I want to read real quick, Acts 2.38, because there's something here that I want everybody to see. Because we got to go to the book of Genesis real quick, and I ain't going to hold you long. I, I need you to see all this. Because when you go home and ponder, when you get in front of somebody... And say, the purpose is, the Lord predestinated this. And the only way you're going to get in is the way the Lord predestinated it for you and I to get in. Yes, right. It says that Peter said unto them, Repent, because they asked in verse 37, Men and brethren, what, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But look at verse 39. Amen. There's a promise to your children, to you and to your children, right. and, it, and to all that is far off, even as many as the Lord, Lord God shall cause. Everybody see that. Yes. Amen. And the next thing it says in verse 40 is to save yourself from this untoward generation. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I need you to see that. Amen. Right. Because of the commandments that the Lord gives, amen, for us to be done. So now I want you to go to Genesis 35 with me real quick. And this is where we're going to line this thing up. Where at? Genesis 35. Genesis 35. Get the mustard and we'll stay, you stay nothing for you. Y'all watch this. <clears throat> I, 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 I took you to the place that the preacher man needed to preach to you. And of course I miss Acts 19 too. Maybe I can get that in there too. But I preached to you that about what my job was to manifest this thing to you, this mystery. And I brought you to Colossians, back to Col or Ephesians there, about the predestination of what the Lord wanted. Amen. What's his intent? Amen. That you would be adopted in this, that he could receive you. Because that's the most important thing. The Lord is not going to touch anything that's not clean. He's not going to dwell because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 that he will not dwell in an unclean temple. He won't dwell there. So I, I want y'all to see and understand that. But here's about Jacob. Everybody knows about Jacob. Some people call him the deceiver. I don't claim him to be a deceiver. I think he done some things that wasn't right. Amen. I think he had some hardship. I I think at times he thought because he had that birthright, Sister Kelly, he could get away with some right. things. 
because we find that today because even we look at this, though Laman was trying to deceive, and I believe the Lord brought that against Jacob for the things that he, he should have told Mama, no Mama, I mean, Esau's supposed to get that, you know, but he didn't do that. He, he said he's going to do what Mama said, but it's all right. Amen. Sometimes we need to do what's right. Yes, right. I hate to say that, but that's just the truth. Amen. But looking at this, Jacob had a tough life, Sister Karen. Had a tough life. And though Esau was trying to kill him, and though his daddy didn't love him, and and though Laman betrayed him, he was trying to get Rachel and he had to marry Leah first and he was toiling over there with 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 with, 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 with his mama's uncle and though God was blessing him and the Bible said that what he had he had more Laman before he left. Right. But through all of this and even him wrestling with the angel of the Lord, I want y'all to look at this chapter thirty five. I just want to read the first couple of verses here. Amen. Because of the Lord is fixing to bless him, Angie, above measure. Fixing to bless him to a place, Brother Al, that he can't. There ain't but one way to get it, and that's him to walk a clean slate before the Lord. And this whole time that Jacob's in a land over there, and he's got wives, and they believe in other things besides what he believes. And the only reason he believes this. Only reason his wives believe him because they see the miracles of what everything that Jacob touches it flourishes. So let's read this real quick, and I I want to share this with you. And God said unto Jacob, Arise and go to Beth, go into Bethel, and dwell there, and make thee an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. And Jacob said unto the household. And all that were with him put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. Yes. Sister Kelly, that makes a difference in this walk. Right. We got to set aside if we're going to take on. Because right. the Lord said that he was a jealous God and you have no other gods before him. Right. right. So in order, amen, to take this blood and it to do some good. And it to do some good. See, some wanted to try to get in there because what Jesus said in, in John chapter 10, if you try to come in any other way, right. then through me you're a thief yes, and you're a robber. Yes, There's a place that we've got to set aside things that's not of God. Because that's the way God predestinated it. You're going to love me and only me. What are you saying? Well, what I'm telling you, you can't have no other gods before him. If playing me and softball is more important than coming to church on Wednesday nights, well, you got to leave me and softball alone. And you say, well, my God, that's just softball. Well, I'm just telling you, you're putting it before the Lord. I'm being honest. I don't care if if the bluegill brother Al is bedding or them crawfish bedding and they just, you got reports, they bring in boatloads of them. You can't slip down there on Sunday and do that and get hooked on pulling them in fast as you put that manner on there. Because see, that, that's bad. That gets like that. That monkey get on you and first day you know you're down there the next day 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 because you can't have any God. You can't put things before the Lord. And you say, well, that just sounds retarded and simple things. Well, Solomon said this, it's the small foxes that spoil them grapes. Yeah. It's small things that trips you up. I can remember what Daddy said when he testified one time. I believe he was sitting right here. Wasn't he, Jennifer? I believe it was right here when he said it. He said the biggest thing that he worried was not being able to see the backside of his yeah. garment and they be in one little old spot like right that he couldn't repent of because he couldn't ever see it. Right. Just one little speck because the Bible said it would be without blemish and without wrinkle. Yeah. That's a tall order. Right. But it ain't a tall order because my job is to preach it to you that you accept it, that I can present you to the Lord perfect. Yeah. If you would accept it. It's predestinating 
uh, 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 Angie, that, it, that you can be perfect. It's predestination that it be that way. That you can be perfect in the Lord. It's predestinated that way. That blood is applied, and you live for Him, and you say, I love you. You see it all the time. <clears throat> them young women that's got them 95-year-old husbands, and they're 20 years old, that's, 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 that's night and day. And she can go, I love him. That's the love of my life. And I ain't loving him a multi-millionaire. <laughs> what about Dollar Bill? Sure it is. <laughs> She probably goes around and goes, Hey, how you doing? Scaring that scary dog into the grave. Y'all thought I got kidding, but I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. But that's love supposed to be. But the Lord said it ain't going to be that way. You couldn't have everything and have me too. After you be with me, and I'm through with you, the fish will still be biting. Right. Grass will still be growing. The sun's going to still be shining until I come back and hit you. Yeah. Right. Truck's still going to run. Light bill still can be paid. Youngins are going to be youngins. But first, you're going to cater to me first. Right? That's right. You're going to cater to me because if you love me, you're not going to let these other things come in yeah. and get between you and I. Right. But see, that's what we do sometimes. We, we try to hold on to God, and we try to hold on to these things at the same, and we get angry. And then we get to that saying is, if God loved me, we go that time. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't put all this on me, but I got to choose. I ain't enough of time. How do I balance all this, Sister Shelly? Well, all you got to do is balance one thing. That's right. Put him first. If you, so to speak, pat his bottom first, all this will fall in place. Right. But if you choose to come over here first and work on this side, God will begin to get on this side. He becomes a jealous God. And things begin to fall apart. And you say, well, my God, what about that? All I was trying to do is help this one and help this one and help this one and help this one. And help. Now all you're doing is walking further and further away from him. And that's what Satan wants to do, to lead you out of the care. That's what they used to do in the old days when they put a guy in that Mojave desert, they tie him up, put him on a horse backwards, and they put a, a bowl of water in front of that horse. That horse would sit there in the wall trying to think he's ever going to get that glass of water. And walk him out there in the middle, him and the fellow would die there in the desert. That's what Satan wants to do to us. Right. He wants right. to put that glass of water in front of mine and your face. This is the right thing to do. And the further all the time, right. you're walking further and further away from the Lord. Right. But I'm so thankful, Brother Al, that things was predestinated how I could get saved. Right. Just care how I could get that blood applied to my life. And all I had to do was make one decision instead of 25 decisions. Right. Just love Him. That's right. Just love Him. After I love him, if there's any time left in the day, I'll get rest this done. Amen. If not, tomorrow will come if he don't come back. God is good, church. Yes. I felt like you.